Basel is about money and business, about culture and lifestyle. It's been like that for decades. No wonder it's the perfect place for the global art business. Flags and fanfare welcome visitors to the International Art Show. What looks like folklore is actually art. It's also a reception for artists and for art itself. You could take it even farther and say that art should well, rule is a bit of an exaggeration. It's simply to honor art. Here, everyone wants to be the first. Those invited today belong to an exclusive circle of important collectors and industry insiders. The hunt is on. New contemporary art and classic modern masterpieces are up for grabs, like this Picasso with a price tag of 12 million US dollars. Crisis, what crisis? The art market shows signs of a solid comeback. And a brand new market survey reveals that the global club of billionaires is expanding again. Art for them, for quite a few of them, is a perfect investment. Here's where they find it. Notable international collectors use the time reserved for them to look around. Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich pays top prices for his acquisitions, art as objects of prestige. And right now it seems there's no investment more lucrative. Personally, I've settled down a bit and I'm waiting until the pieces I want have already been sold. So you won't be tempted? That's my trick. I'm looking at the German Expressionists instead. So you're more interested in classic moderns? It's very interesting to see that these works are still selling for prices that have long been exceeded by contemporary art. We tour the contemporary galleries. In recent years, they've seen the biggest price rises. Works by one of the scene's biggest money spinners, Damien Hirst, are on show in Basel, like Memories of Love. John Bergren, son of legendary art collector Heinz Bergren, just sold a picture for 85,000 US dollars. What is the, the main motive? Is it the safe value they want to have in fear of inflation? Or is it rather the passion of collecting or even the f frenzy or, or the, the addiction? I think the, uh, the overall passion, there's a certain competitiveness about it. There's also uh, the discovery. That's one of the things about an art fair. People will walk around, they'll f maybe be looking for a painting by Ed Ruscha, but find a painting by Wayne Thiebaud, another artist. So it's the unexpected. The hunt. Yes. Also. Yes. North America and Europe are no longer the sole center of the art world. There are new kids on the block. China, Latin America and India. Five galleries from the subcontinent are represented in Basel this year. India's art scene is gradually developing, thanks to the country's new wealthy class. For the first time, Indian collectors are attracting attention in Basel. I met up with Mr. Akana, who mainly collects video art by young artists. You're a collector by passion, not by interest in investment. Absolutely not. I would not lie, I started with the investment perspective for the first two years because that's what gets you an interest. When you buy something and you suddenly realize, oh my God, it's become ten times the value, then so your eye is really sure. Uh, but after studying and reading on art, uh, they're like babies. I, I don't part with anything, I don't sell anything anymore. I, it just, my family thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> The fair's exhibition platform, Art Unlimited, provides a venue for huge sculptures and large-scale installations, as well as the impressive video projections by American artist Doug Aitken. 
There's much to discover at Art Basel, and the fair presents art in a thoroughly enjoyable way. Organizers of some recent art biennials could learn a thing or two here. Money, glamour and exciting artworks make a perfect blend. Basel is still setting standards in the art world.